number one bad habit I have is procrastination, right? This is the, I love the Ten Commandments. You guys, some of you guys go to church, no, yes. But the Eleventh Commandment is thou shalt not kid thyself, right? Uh, my, my pastor always says this. He says that we're great judges of other people's actions. We're great attorneys of our own. I was the best attorney that you'd ever met on why excuses to why I didn't get things done. Hey, did you get those sales calls done? Yeah, man, I was going to. Some stuff got caught up. And, and this, I could sell Cody. If I worked for Cody, I could sell him on anything, and he would believe it to a certain point. Or he'd know I was full of BS. The fact is, I, you can't BS a BS when I was a BS or BS in myself. And the reality was, the baddest habit I had was I was a procrastinator. If I just would have stuck to the time after time after time after time. By the way, I can pick that guy out of the room in, in about 10 minutes. I can pick out the guys just like me. I can pick out the procrastinators because it's natural. I still procrastinate. I told them on the video, my wife asked me to go pick weeds out on Saturday. I laid in bed all day long and I, I, I used my kids as bait. I'm like, I'm gonna, me and Josiah wanna watch Star Wars and me and Jordan wanna watch, like I, I'm procrastinating, but I use my kids as, as bait. But here's the reality, we procrastinate because of fear. Or it's natural to us, but if it's natural to us, we're afraid to be unnatural to grow into something that we're not. Uh, another bad habit I was, I would do was I would never do what I said I was going to do. I'd say, hey, Cody, let's talk next week, and I'd never call him. Mm. Hey, I'll text you about that thing tomorrow, and i never do it. Here's the thing I know. The wealthiest people I know do everything they say they're going to do. I can look at your income and tell you how, how much you stick to your word or not. Isn't that crazy? Because I can look at my income, and I kept my income about 30% of the time, and I made about 30000 a year. My wife said, you going to beat your son's game at 4? I get there at 430 Hey, don't forget to take out the trash. I forget. I can tell why. Because wealthy people always do what they say they're going to do. What if Cody said, I'm going to pay you guys next week, and he didn't pay you? Would you trust him? Or you'd lose influence. But if he asks some of you guys to do something, you don't do it. The reason I wasn't what Cody was, because I didn't do what Cody did. I, did. I had bad habits. When I started to change, I started to change, and I started to have better habits. And, and I don't mean that we're bad people. We just, there's no such thing. My dad molested my sisters and I'm not a bad, he wasn't a bad person, he made bad decisions. I have to forgive my dad and he just, he didn't have all the tools. When I started to watch people that were wealthy, here's the thing that I did, I changed my environment. I stopped hanging out with the guys I hung out with. I stopped going to the bar with the guys I went to the bar with. I stopped playing video games with the guys I played video games with. I stopped going to the gym with the guys I went to the gym with. And I started looking at people that had what I wanted. This is, the, this is gonna sound like the dumbest thing in the world. I looked at what, what he has what I want, I'm gonna do what he does. Like we learned this in kindergarten, there's a game called Follow the Leader. And we're adults, it's called masterminding, but we don't do it. I thought if I looked at someone like Cody, this is really what I, can, I be, can we be real? Yeah. Can I just take it off? Sure. I thought, rich white kid, he's got both parents that love him. My dad molested me, he's an alcoholic, my mom traveled. He's got friends, he went to a good college, he played. I'd make up excuses without ever, without ever having met him. I would already judge. Why? Because I, he had what I wanted, but I was scared to say that he was doing something that I wasn't doing. And so I stopped doing that. For the first time in my life, when I got into symmetry, I took off the mask and said, if he has what I want, I'll do whatever he's doing. Here's how I got successful. If he's getting up at five in the morning, I had to get up at four. If he's reading three books a month, I gotta read four. If he's making $100, I gotta make 200. Why? If I just have to follow what he's doing to have what he has, if I do more than he's doing, then I can have more than he has. I've got guys with 20, 30 years of sales experience and people business that I'm catching ground on because I get up at three o'clock in the morning. It's not, it's not rocket science. If, listen, if Cody wears shoes like this, it sounds weird, I'm gonna start wearing shoes. I'm gonna do whatever it takes because I'm gonna prove him wrong that, I'm gonna prove myself wrong that if I do what he does, I can have what he has, so I'm gonna do everything and then I'm gonna prove, uh, I did everything he did, I can't have what he has. But the more I started to hang around guys like Nate Alford and do what he was doing, and he would get up and he would check his emails, he'd check his bank account, he'd make dials and he'd hold himself accountable and he'd go on appointments and he, I realized that my life started changing. And that buddy's calling me, hey, you wanna go to the bar? Dude, I'm running appointments, you know, it's Monday and Tuesday. What about Wednesday? No, I gotta start doing recruiting stuff on Wednesday, Thursday. I realized the same guys that were deadbeats were calling me every day of the week because they wanted someone, you realize we like comforting people that are like us. Mm -hmm. Like birds of the same feather flock together. If you're hanging around guys that aren't worth very much, I would look in the mirror because that's what I was doing. Because I thought to myself, that guy's a bum. But I'm hanging out with him every day. <laughs> Seven days a week, we're hanging out, playing video games. He's got a 95 guy, I've got a 95. We meet at six o'clock, we talk about how we hate our wives. You know one of the biggest things that changed me? I started being around men who love their wives. 
all my friends that hated their wives, they all complained about their wives. When I was around them, you know what I did? I complained about my wife. There's nothing special about me. When I got around men that loved the wives and talked about good about the wives, you know what changed? I started talking good about my wife and loving my wife. The people you hang around. My mom says the two most important decisions you'll ever make in your life is where you spend eternity and who you hang around. That's a fact. That's not, listen, that's, it's, it's a law. A, a law of reciprocation, I don't know what it is. Just like the law of gravity. If I drop this water bottle, what's gonna happen to it? It's gonna fall. There's always one idiot. It's like, it's gonna bounce right back into your head. Like, shut up, no it's not. But <laughs> Who you hang out with determines who you'll become. It does. Here's how I know that. My son went to public school. He didn't have a lot of friends. He's a good kid. Good natured kid, quiet, but he's really funny. He's just like his dad. You know, he's big. My son's son, 6'5", 350. He's a monster. He's a general <laughs> giant. He's a baby. My son didn't have a lot of friends, but he was, his grades were bad. And I'm harping, I'm on his ass. Man, why aren't your grades good? He played sports, but he was never great. But the people he hung out with were kind of turds. Those are just the kids that were kind of, he's kind of an athlete. The ki two of his buddies got kicked out of school for doing drugs. My son's never done a drug. Those are just people he hung out with. We moved him to private school. I paid $50,000 a year for my four kids to go to private school. And... Per kid? No. No. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of money do you think I'm making? I'm not that good. Good night. We can talk later. Holy moly. Cody sold you guys good. No, $50,000 a year. It's like 3000 it's like 3900 a month plus expenses, so it works out to like 47000 plus, um, or 45000 plus the meal plan. So he gets to a different school. They care about him more. The teachers care about it. It's a smaller school. He had, at his birthday party when he was 13 years old, he had two friends at. At the birthday party he had this year, he had 19 friends at because there's only one school, one grade. They're all closer. He's going to play Division One football now. He started as a junior, he's gonna start as a senior, he's doing better. And the only thing is I did was take the same kid, put him in a different, different atmosphere. Now we see that with kids and people and we think, oh, if you put a druggie around a bunch of druggies, are they gonna quit doing drugs? No, but then we look at our own lives and say, yeah, if I can take myself from where I'm at and plant myself or position myself somewhere different, I can get different results. But here's what I thought, I could get different results staying here. That's what we all think. I'm really good enough, Marlon, okay, Change, I can change, I can do what Cody does, but I'm gonna stay around my friends. But if you're around Cody four or five hours a day and you're around your friends 10 hours a day, is anything gonna change? Just what, same thing I told Cody earlier. I used to go to events to hear motivational speakers and I get fired up and I go home back to the same crap. Listen, sometimes the people that, the biggest crap are the people close to you. My wife was very negative. Why, because she was hurt, because I wasn't making money and she couldn't trust me. So that was my fault. When, our financial situation changed. She's the most positive person I know. So I had to stop hanging around with people that I hung around with to get different results. If not the definition, it's not the definition of insanity because I looked it up, but what we know is the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. That's how I lived my life for 37 years. I wanted to be wealthy. I'd always dreamed of being wealthy. And I always wanted the, the best stuff, but I never got it. Why? Because I hang out with the same people. I got the same friends that are gonna call me this Saturday night because there's a fight, a pay-per-view fight. You know, what I, you, know, you know what I finally realized? When you have enough money, you can rent the pay-per-view at your house and it doesn't bother you. I don't have to go to the bar. I can spend 60 or 75 bucks. I can rent it right there at my house, rent some wings, have all my buddies come to my house. I don't have to go out and risk some of my friends getting busted or drinking or doing that. I don't have to go. When you have enough money, you can, I'm, I'm telling you, my perspective changed because, but the same buddy's gonna call me. Hey, you gonna go to the fights? No, I'm gonna have it at my house. No, I don't wanna come over, I wanna go out. Why, because you're miserable at your house, you're miserable with your marriage, you feel, I used to hate myself. As a father, husband, uh, friend, I, I love myself now. Why, because I took time to work on, I had to look myself in the mirror every day. You know the hardest thing to do is look, when's, when's the last time you've looked in the mirror for more than a minute? A Most people can't do it. You know what my wife did? She puts these words on my mirror. I have a picture on my phone, I'll show you later. It's got millionaire, humble, great father, great husband, phenomenal speaker. She's got all these words. So when I look in the mirror, my subconscious sees those words. Why? My, I bought my son a Hummer for his 16th birthday. He went to H2 Hummer, it's his favorite car, it's my favorite car. 
I was jealous because he got it, so I drive it more than he does. On weekends, I always take it to get a watch. You want to wash your car? Fine, I'll go watch it. <laughs> and I floss around in the Hummer. Um, I never saw a black Hummer. I never saw very many Hummers in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when I didn't have it. Once you have it, all you do is notice Hummers. I see a Hummer every day. It's the same thing's true with you. Why? Like, were those Hummers there before? Yeah, but it was out of your subconscious. So when I look in the mirror and I see millionaire, great husband, great father, even if I'm looking in the mirror, which I make myself, why? Because 92% of the people won't look in the mirror for more than a minute. And I said, I don't want to be like the 92%. I want to like what I see. And if I don't change it, I look in the mirror for a minute. I just smile and I start to read the words. Why? Because they're in my subconscious when I look in the mirror. And soon I'll start to see millionaire, great husband, great father, humble. I want to become what I see. Hey, if you love this video and you want to get your phone skills up, I got the video for you how to nail the first 30 seconds of a call. Go right there, click on the video, and I'll see you there. Hey, insurance phone calls are tough. Nobody wants to pick up the phone. Everybody struggles to do this. And I'm going to show you how to nail the first 30 seconds of an insurance phone call right now. There's several mistakes.